We just stand and agree one another. So welcome to worship and God bless you. And uh, grab the couple more. Almost 10, 100. You can grab hug together and love each other. Let's sing is your name. Let's sing together. Amen. Good to have you back this evening. Just a couple of reminders. This Wednesday is our mid-month meal, so you want to come back for an amazing pulled pork sandwich and some chips. And they said some about cold slop. I don't know what that is, but it doesn't sound edible. And then some great desserts. And then the next day, young at heart, steak and lobster, I think is what they said. It's going to look like a hamburger, taste like a hamburger, but you can think steak and lobster, okay? Uh, we've got a couple of things going on. Our students are going to be heading off tomorrow to Aspendale Baptist Encampment in Cloudcroft, New Mexico. They said it's going to be, what, in the mid-70s? Chance of rain every day. Then I think they're going to try to jump over to Alamogordo, do some sand surfing. They're so excited. They're excited. <laughs> So pray for John and the 20-something angels that he's taking with him and the adults and semi-adults. And then I think uh, Tuesday, Dr. Che's son is going off to boot camp. Monday, tomorrow. And so we need to lift up Dr. Che and his wife as their son goes off. Uh, what branch of the military? Is it Army or Army? So uh, as a parent, you know that's difficult when you say goodbye to a child and they're going into the military. And so we're just going to have a special time of prayer right now for these two. And then we also got a church member, Ricky Brooks, a uh, good man, his wife Becca. Ricky was in a rodeo in uh, Andrews on Saturday and got bucked off a horse and got a severely fractured pelvis. And uh, he's going to be having some surgery tomorrow. So that's going to be a, a long recovery there. 
Uh, I think that's all the announcements I got. Let's kind of say a quick prayer and cover these people as their families are in transition. So Father, I thank you for the students that are so excited about going off to camp. And we're so thankful you've already been there. You've cleared the way for them. We ask that your traveling mercies be upon them, before them, beside them, behind them as they travel the highways and get up in the mountains and get closer to you. We truly believe there's going to be a life-changing experience happen at this camp this week. And we lift up Dr. Che and his wife as they hug their son and step back and allow him to join the military to protect and to serve. And that's why America is such an amazing place to live because we have the best military on the planet. So we ask your protection over him and your strength in his body as he's going to need it for the long boot camp that he goes through. And, and Father, whatever other journeys he's going to be on, that your angels will be encamping around him in peace over Dr. Che and his wife as, as they uh, pray for their son and know that he's going to be taken care of. And for Calvary Baptist, as we are a light to this community, we want to reach out. We want to show them we're not just a church in a building. That when this door is closed and we leave, we're taking church with us because we are the church. So Father, tonight, may we worship you when we open our hearts and allow your Holy Spirit to change our lives. We ask in your name. Amen. We just stand, we sing together. You just said, you're my friend. Jesus is all the Lord to me, my life, my joy, my hope. He is my strength from day to day, without Him I would fall. When I am sad to hear my woe, no other one can cheer me so. When I can say, So true to me, following him, I know I'm right. He watches all my day and night. Following him, my day and night, he's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me. I want to obey. Him I'm just in when life's feeding day shall end. Beautiful life with such a friend, beautiful life that has no end. Eternal life, eternal joy, is my friend. He is my friend. Amen. Let's sing together. And he tells me I am his own 
26. Everybody speak together. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Are you joy? Do you have a joy? Let's enjoy this time with singing. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. That's a great thing. Yes. Amen. You may be seated.
I'll get this figured out. It's very complicated. Hey, good evening. Good to have you back. Good to see you here. This is the story. I don't know if you have ever made this mistake, but you saw somebody. And you know that somebody. And you went over there and you're like, hey, Bob, hey, Sue. And they turned around and it ain't Bob or Sue. And they tell you. Wow, who are you? I was rushing around. I was in banking. I was going to night college. I was, semester just started. I ran into this class. I was almost late. The bell rang. I sat down. Professor actually goes through the roll there, blah, 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 blah. Any name I didn't call, I'm like, what's your name? I said, Steve Carter. Sorry, what class are you in? I said, personal finance. You're in the wrong class. I had to get up and do the walk of shame out the door while everybody's like, that guy didn't even know where he's going. Doesn't even know what class he's in. I'm kind of leading into tonight because it's not funny. I'm in Matthew chapter 7. To me, one of the scariest phrases in the entire Bible is in Matthew chapter 7. I'm in verses 21 through 23. And so if you have your Bible with you, you can read along with me. And it's titled, True and False Disciples. Matthew seven twenty one. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom, but only the one who does the will of the Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on the day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Verse 23, then I will plainly tell them, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoer. It's one of those things like that just doesn't sound fair. They said they cast out demons. But they never once said they were believers in Jesus Christ. They were followers. They never said we are Christians. And that's the scary part. And I've said it a time or two that people will go to hell through the church. That's another scary statement. Coming and sitting in a pew isn't going to get you to heaven. A personal relationship with Jesus Christ is. And that's the only way you get to heaven. And so maybe you're the believer of evolution that we evolved out of the puddle of goo and we grew from the goo and this is, this is us. And then when we die, our life will be as meaningless as a tree falling over in the forest. Maybe that's your belief. But I believe in the creator. The one who created us in his image. That he created us on purpose, for a purpose, to do his will. And then when we, this physical structure does die... We go to a place called heaven. And we leave behind us a legacy. That others can say, you know what? Steve Carter isn't in heaven because he was a preacher and he spoke the word. Steve Carter is in heaven because he accepted Jesus Christ into his life. And attempted every day to live a better life than the day before. And I think about this, this flesh in clothes. And I think you're happy that it's clothed. But I think about this flesh and the, and the number that's on it. Right now it's 56 and maybe this year it'll be 57. And I don't know when God has my days numbered. But all of us have to realize we have a number. And it's between now and that number that we need to be doing the will of God. And we need to be talking and telling. I think what got me was James Shelton last, when we were gone, was talking about being a witness. Have you ever spoken to anybody about Jesus? I know that's a scary and I know it's somewhat judgmental too, but that's part of who we are. Are we true disciples or are we false disciples? Are we spreading the word of God through the way we live? Because understand this, this is one of those catch-all phrases. Everybody is going to stand and kneel before the Lord Jesus Christ on that judgment day. When I mean everybody, I mean everybody. Everyone. And there will be some of those shocked when they hear the words, I never knew you. Depart from me. I never knew you. In Revelation, when I said everyone means everyone, Revelation chapter 20, here's what it says, starting at 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat, oh devil, you come buzzing around me. Get away. And I saw him that sat on it, from whose from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. 
Verse 12, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up their dead which were in it. And the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Oh, that fly. The devil don't want me to talk about him. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now just for clarity, when it talks about, and the sea will give up their dead, that means every dead body is going to be judged in the ocean, on the mountaintop, in the city, in the village, wherever that dead body is. Everybody is going to come before the judgment throne. Everybody. Not just some, but everyone. And there will be the, those that will kneel and go, Oh my God, you're real. Poof. And they're really gone. They don't get to barter at the throne. Well, I didn't know you were real. I, I just thought you were a figment of those millions of people's imaginations. That's why I didn't believe you. I want to believe in you now. Now is going to be too late. And that's why on this earth we believe in him now. And that's why we're ridiculed and persecuted now. It's kind of like the granddaughter that went to her grandmother's house and she opened the door and there was grandma, grandma reading the Bible. And she's like, Grandma, every time I come in here reading that Bible, you must have read that Bible a hundred times. Why are you reading that Bible again? And grandma's reply was from the heart. I'm preparing for my final exam. I wonder how many times we've actually read and understood what we read or do we just have this thing called the Bible and we kind of mark in it? Sometimes it's tore up with a sticker or two on there. The, the, the ribbon's kind of torn. Like people think that we've really gotten into this. But we're going to be at the throne and right there it says every person can be held accountable for their works. Now, I don't know about you, but, but I can't hardly imagine when, when God calls everybody together. And everybody has to show up. I mean, everybody. From Rome and Babylon to Washington, D.C. to Brownfield, Texas. Everybody is going to show up. There's going to be no secrets. You ever seen those commercials about Las Vegas? What's their phrase? Somebody tell me. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, that doesn't pan out in heaven. What happens in Vegas is known in heaven. And so you'll be called out on that. Just think about this for a minute. Every king that's ever sat on the throne in England, all the caliphates in Baghdad, the maharajas from India, the emperors from China, presidents of the United States, billionaires and poor, will one day stand and kneel at the throne of God. Everyone. Nothing will be hidden. Have you intentionally ever hidden something from yourself? It's called being forgetful. You ever done that? The keys, your shoes, you know, an outfit, something that you're like, where did I put that? Anybody at all? Yeah. And sometimes, I'm still looking for my iPad. It's in my house somewhere. It's in a Christmas box. Because we packed it up, I'm sure, when something was going on and Around October when we start pulling Christmas out, we're going to find that thing. And we'll have a good laugh. But right now I can't remember, don't have a clue. Neither, neither can Kim and the kids have looked and looked. But nothing will be hidden. And I think the word judge in the Greek, it's, it's really pronounced kind of a crazy way. And it's called, it's A-N-A-K, 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 Renault. That's what the word judge in the Greek means. And it means this, to investigate, to examine, to scrutinize, or to sift. Every one of us is going to be sifted for our works. Nothing will be hidden. In Mark chapter 4, 22. For there is nothing hidden which shall not be manifested, neither anything kept secret. Just real quick, has anybody got a secret? that only you know and, and before God nobody's going to find out about it you'll go to the grave with it that's what's been said I'm going to take that to the grave nobody's ever going to find out about that if they ever find out that Steve likes chocolate it's over I'm going to keep that a secret nothing will be everything in the scripture to nothing hidden nothing is secret before God and yet we try 
We try in the dark, secret corners of our lives to hide something. We'll look in the 2 a.m. refrigerator and nobody will know I'm in there. But God sees all and He knows all. And unfortunately, there's going to be some terrifying times when those people are called before Him. Anybody ever watch uh, Chronicles of Narnia? Who wrote that? Just real quick, test. C.S. Lewis, thank y'all. This is one quote from the Chronicles of Narnia about the lion. And in the movie, The Lion, who was that? God. Here's what C.S. Lewis wrote. As the lion passed by, they were terrified, afraid he would turn and look at them. Yet in some strange way, they wished he would. Naturally, one would be nervous meeting a lion. The question was asked to one who knew this lion well, is he safe? I find the answer both wise and startling. Safe? Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe. But he is good. He's the king. Now that should terrify us. He's not one of these lions that you pet at the zoo that's been there for 20 years. He's a fierce, roaring lion. But if we who are in him have nothing to fear, then he's good. Because he's the king. He is the most powerful ever. There's nothing more powerful than him. So you Google power. You, power is associated feeling with explosive. And we get to the bombs and we think about things that are powerful and explosive. I'm going to say this because it's Russian and I don't speak Russian. But it's T-S-A-R, Tsar, B-O-M-B-A. I'm thinking like Bomba? Like La Bomba? No, it's Russian. And it's the Tsar Bomba. And as powerful as we think things are, this had 50 megatons of TNT in it and was set off in the 60s. The most powerful explosion on the planet. But this I didn't know. It's good to know history. I did not know that with that being so powerful that the sun, the sun every second produces an explosive power of 1.8 billion Tsar Bomba bombs. Every second. That's the power of the sun. 1.8 billion of those every second. But that's nothing compared to the one who created it. And the sun really is, we think it's big and giant, but it's not. Uh, doing a little more research, there's a, there's a star out there called the Canis Majoris. And that one star is as big as our solar system. And God created that. That's how big and that's how powerful and that's how knowing he is. There's nothing we can hide. And so in here in Matthew 7, we are either lying or we're telling the truth. There's nothing in between. We can't put a mask on ourselves and fake being a Christian. Either we are or we are not. And if we are, then part of that resume says, witness for God. We have got to be a witness. But are we? Oh, we were talking just a little while ago about putting our Dallas Cowboy jerseys on and our foam fingers. And that means loser. <laughs> and we'll do that, won't we? We'll do that. We'll, we'll be a uh, walking billboard for a football team. But will we tell anybody about Jesus Christ, our own kin, our own flesh and blood? Will we tell a brother or a sister or dare a grandmother or granddad? About Jesus. Oh, I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared they'll stay in hell forever. And so that should motivate me to talk to them about a risen Savior that wants to love them in heaven forever. In Revelation 6, it says this. And the king of the earth, the great man, the rich man, the, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave, every free man, uh, themselves, will hide themselves in the cave in the rocks of the mountains and say to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us, hide us from the face of God, for he is on his throne, and, and save us from his wrath. They know, they fear, they understand the power of, but they won't submit to. I wonder when the last time you submitted to. Submitted to, to Jesus and all that he wants us to do. Everything. 
I don't know if alcohol has ever touched your lips. It's touched mine numerous times when I was growing up, and that's why it almost took my life. And, and driving while under the influence is not a good thing. You think either you're a NASCAR driver, of which you're not, or you're driving slow enough to evade anybody else that might be driving fast, which you're usually not. But I ran across the story. It happened in Nashville, Tennessee. And a patrolman came across a, a car. Three flat tires. Every window broken out. The roof had been collapsed in, indicating it had been rolled over. And there was a lady sitting behind the steering wheel. Alive. Of which the patrolman walked up with no blood evident on her. Said, ma'am, are you okay? And her answer was, I'm fine. I just can't seem to get my car started. Well, come to find out she had consumed quite a bit of alcohol and failing to navigate the turn went over and rolled her car multiple times, exploding three of the four tires, collapsing the roof down, coming up on the tires. And yet she did not know she had been in a wreck. Matter of fact, it says she was quite surprised when the police officer told her she was under arrest for she had almost killed herself. There's going to be a lot of people when the judgment day comes that's not going to know that they're going to be in a wreck. They think they're really good people. And they might be really good people. They're not axe murderers and they're not embezzlers and they're not arsonists. But they're not Christians either. This isn't a select club. This club is open to anyone who says, Jesus, come into my life. I'm lost, destined for hell without you. I, I want to be saved. I want to be redeemed. And the, well, didn't I say, Lord, Lord, one time? And didn't I tell somebody at the coffee shop? And didn't I buy that little old lady lunch one time? Thou must get to heaven. I never knew you. He never knew them because they never knew him. It truly is that simple. That we can deny it all we want. That that's, that's really not... not that's, he's really going to let me in. I don't have to be. I'm, I'm just going to deny what you're saying, Steve. Well, you can deny it all you want. I believe it. I believe reading the Bible and that's how we get to heaven. Well, as a matter of fact, people can deny things all they want. In 1940, the German Holocaust that killed millions and millions of, of Jews. In, nine, in 2001, uh, they did a discovery of the German people and they said that they denied it ever happened. There were no concentration camps. People were never burned to death. They denied it happening. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. Six million people murdered. You can deny it all you want, but I believe when it comes down to it and the end comes, you'll no longer deny it. And I know I'm hopefully preaching to the choir. The question is, choir, are you singing it to anyone else? Or are you just singing it to yourself? I'm saved, I'm saved, I got that fire insurance, I'm saved. I just made that up. You could tell. But I'm wondering why are we so secretive about us being saved and how we got saved? Why wouldn't we tell somebody? I, I think it'd be so that Roland got baptized this morning and he never tells us so. Don't shh, don't tell nobody. Nothing happened in church, Nothing. I think he'd want to go up there, hey, ask me about what happened. Oh, what happened on church? I got baptized. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? I know we wear the shirts, the fish, the, the ichthus, the crosses, the jewelry, everything. But do we tell them why we wear it? Or is it just a really good accessory? We'll tell people about our woes and our worries, but we don't we'll tell people about Jesus. I'll say it again, depart from me, for I never knew you. I wonder if those words are getting to you tonight. Because they got to me over and over. One translation says this, and Jesus plainly said. That's even scarier. There's no confusion there. He plainly said, I never knew you. He didn't send it in Latin and you never heard it. He didn't send it in Hebrew and you never understood it. He said it plainly in the language you understand. How do I get to know this Jesus? I know him in the Bible, great. I know him in singing, great. I know him because I got great Christian friends, great. But do you know him? That's 
one of the easiest things we have to do is walk. You know, and I tell you over and over, I didn't walk the aisle of a pristine church and come down to a polished pastor. I was kneeling in a dusty, dirty grain elevator in Clovis, New Mexico to a guy who came and filled his tractor up with diesel. But he believed in what he, he, he served to God. He believed that others needed to know. And wherever that person was, whether it was the grocery store or the church, he was going to tell them about him. And he told me about him. And then he said those words, have you ever accepted Jesus into your heart? Well, I, as a baby, I was, I was sprinkled. That, that must, no, that wasn't it. Well, in, in high school, I went to a high school revival and we had a lot of pizza and some guy screamed and yelled and that must have been, no, that wasn't it. Have you personally, and I hope you're thinking right now, I went back to this day and I remember that day clearly when I accepted Jesus. My, maybe not remember the calendar date, but you remember walking that aisle and saying those words or, or you remember in your own bedroom or the barn, wherever you were and said, I want Jesus into my heart. And that's called a testimony. And why don't we want to tell our testimony to people we love? Well, surely my friends, they all know Jesus. They must be going to heaven. Have you asked them? If you love them, if you've broken bread with them, if you've had the swim party with them, if you're going to the mountains with them, why don't you want to let them know about Jesus and see where they are at? What are, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? get mad at you or maybe they'll finally confront the lie that Satan has told them well sure you must be we call it clarification clarification is what I define this way and wrote it does anybody have any glasses have you ever allowed smudges to get on them and then some more smudges and then a little more smudges on there and finally you're like trying to find the clear spot and you take them off and you wipe them clean and clear and you put them on it's like oh, I can see I can clearly see is the phrase the devil would love for you to walk around in that smudge state every day not not clearly seeing just but Jesus I mean if you want to clearly see me you got to wipe away the smudges you got to clear the way and once you've done that, you're like, man, this is so much better. I can see clearly. And I'm wondering if people can clearly see Jesus in you. Or have you made it a secret? Are you a Sunday Christian or are you an everyday Christian? Because I was even at the hospital last night with Joy and Steve and Kim. And, and there was a lady, not from me to Dr. Che and she was on her phone and she was bleeping and bleeping and bleep bleeping and I'm like Lord whoo I can clearly see that she needs Jesus and I'm not judging and I'm thinking I, I don't have to travel too far to find a lost soul we don't have to travel too far church to find a lost soul Right within the confines of the city limits and maybe even your blocks and maybe even your own house is where you'll find that last soul. And so think about this. The last time you prayed for something miraculous to happen. The last time you prayed to the Canis Majoris God who's created one star so big it fills up a solar system and said, God, I, I want something so big to happen. Not just to me, but through me. I want others not to see me, but see you through me. But yet, I think too many Christians, one, give up on prayer. We pray to a small God for small things. Oh, just let me go to sleep tonight. No, let me, don't let the bed bucks bite. If you want to steal my soul, okay. Amen. Instead of praying the big things. We settle for the minimum things when God says, I got the maximum blessings for you. I think, if understand this, if we put little effort in, we get little effort back. Why don't we put a big effort in? In, in not just going and, and saying, but going and showing others a risen Savior. I can still hear the echoes of going to a Promise Keepers rally in Colorado and the chant started. 
I love Jesus. Yes, I do. I love Jesus. How about? And then we got to throw it. Got to throw them. How about you? And then the, the real chant came. We love. We love Jesus. We love Jesus. And then the altar call comes. And I'm just not saying it's just men, but, but we get caught up in that. That hype is what we call it. Whether it's a camp hype or a revival hype or whatever. And so-and-so goes down there and they throw their snuff can in there. Another guy throws his cigarettes in there. Another guy gets a flask and throws it in there. And I, I'm free. Well, I want to see him free three weeks, three months, three years later free. Because the God that we serve is able to keep us free. We've been set free. But there's a demon out there that still wants to bring that, as I call it, the black blanket to envelop you again in that sin. Thinks that you can never be free. So you've got to remind that demon, you're no longer under my skin. You're under my foot. And I get to crush you in the name of Jesus Christ. I, I no longer have to be bound by the chains of your lies. Because I know Jesus Christ, yes I do, I know Jesus Christ, how about you? I know him as my Savior. And I know him as my Lord. I'm wondering tonight why we have become a secret society of saints. Instead of bold servants for a Savior. Because there are people right out these doors. Or let me back that. There might be people right in these doors. That come in here, sit in the pew, that have a Bible, that have a Bible, and yet will go straight to hell if Jesus came for them today. Because nobody sat with them for a few moments and said, hey, I love you. And I want to see you in heaven. Tell me about your experience with Jesus. Tell me when you, when you bent those knees and you bowed that head and said, I'm lost. I'm destined for hell. I don't want a single soul to get to heaven and hear my Savior say, depart from me. I never knew you. Would you stand with me, please? Father, we come before you tonight. And it's scary because you could come back tonight. And there would be those who would almost get to heaven. I read an incredible story about the Titanic as it was sinking. People were in such denial, they were picking up ice from the iceberg, putting it in their drinks, and drinking it as the ship sank, not believing it would sink. And that's a lie from the devil that, that one day we'll all get to heaven. No, the only those who have accepted you as Savior and Lord. Oh, I don't need to accept you today or tonight. There will be plenty of other times. That's a lie. We're not given tomorrow. I wouldn't want anyone to hear, depart from me for I never knew you. Maybe there's a dad or a mom that needs to talk to a son or a daughter. Maybe there's a husband or a wife that needs to talk to each other. Maybe there's a co-worker that needs to talk to a boss. Father, we're we're missing such precious time for one day Jesus will come triumphantly for his church and we'll be gone so father let us be passionate about getting those names to your book and telling others about a risen savior so father tonight impress upon our hearts give us a purpose Clear the way that we can make a phone call, knock on a door, and tell someone about Jesus. That we would never hear, depart from me, for I never knew you. Speak to us, Lord. Give us that name. Let us go talk to somebody asking your name. Amen. To see the dawn, all the darkest day, Christ on the road to Calvary. Child by simple man, torn and bitten man, nailed to the cross of
those words we stand forgiven at that cross but there are others who need to, to know those words who need to hear those words we have a short church council meeting right after this service we got a big week ahead of us please continue looking, lifting up our student body as they travel Dr. Che and his wife they'll be going up to Buffalo New York man there's some Jesus going to be spread up there so pray for those traveling and it's still this summer, uh, Wednesday's mid-month meal, Thursday's Young at Heart. So lots going on. Get plugged in. Tell someone about Jesus. Dr. Che? Hold on together. To God be the glory. Praise the Lord. Jesus, the Son. 